Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John. This report is for the 2nd of November. And our continuation, you know, it's not even a coincidence anymore to even talk about these things because each of our key points that we keep putting up, this was the last algo at 31. We stopped there. Next one, 62. You can see it's already hit, rejected slightly. Um, but we're probably going to see significant action right around it as well. Um, and brings us just right back up to the initial base where we dipped below the red line and they created the false dip to clear out any weak hands and right back to the same spot. So for all the quote unquote carnage, um, and then you've got of course uh, fund money coming in uh, the next couple of days, so could even propel this further. Um, as you can see, solid uh, dip of the orange below the green for the uh, buy configuration. Uh, green is now taking over cyan, so it doesn't even matter if orange moves up as long as green remains over cyan. Um, that would still be in the bullish category. And the only problem with the sustainability is the uh, steel so high. Normally, you would expect that steel to reset. But long-term buyers in that can certainly um, hold on to it. The previous top pivot right here... Uh, if we look at that in the minus 13.6 range, 1359 uh, was the lowest. And right now we're at minus 12. So we're already moved past this. That's a bullish break as you would uh, pass the previous uh, high point. So it's just uh, letting you know that there's plenty of uh, buying support to this, uh, and of course, in the NASDAQ, you can see the P2, which was this higher pivot we talked about the other day, and same configuration. So the market's looking exactly identical. Um, could be at the beginnings of the uh, extreme getting into a positive. Likewise, um, for the ES, we'll keep an eye on that because that could signal um, a soft end to it and wouldn't be coincidental if it's right here about the 50% mark uh, from our Morganachis. Uh, we're already reached it with the NASDAQ, so. Something to pay attention to, uh, and of course, look at that power move. Nothing, uh, all that beneficial happened in the euro to generate that, except for this is what happens when central banks say, "Hey, hey, hey no, 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 not below this line. We won't go." And um, after this kind of move, significant uh, enough short covering creates a nice pop that helps the S and P. So as long as that continues, boom. Um, but. The realization of rates, obviously we dip below that critical 113, uh, close back above it, but still, uh, last time we moved was right about here. Uh, would we expect to see that happen again when well, we started to dip below the red line? So maybe the belief is, and this is kind of trading counter to the narrative that you hear on the news because um, the market's pricing in here more a continuation Republican administration rather than a split government so that's kind of confusing when you look at it from that standpoint um, why the markets would be trading counter to what everything you're hearing uh, news wise is so that's always worth noting is someone going to get surprised and is that going to create uh, even more volatility uh, next week so um, <laughs> interesting uh, well all the way back down to that previous uh, gap low so this boosted inflation uh, just in time for uh, the holidays and everything and now uh, it's going to soften towards the beginning of next year it will take a while before that eases off and uh, spike back in um, gold uh, was unusual we were heading towards uh, a DLC spread right there not quite and then boom it rejects it and that's a big gap up and move um, suggesting that uh, there's uh, some currency issues and things that may be at play and or um, real inflation is about to get serious. So go figure. Uh, what we're seeing in the markets is not really what you're hearing about a lot of on the news. So that's a, I love to see that because I think that always presents opportunities because it just means that the broader crowd has been uh, lulled into uh, sleep. So here you can see the start of the day. And we were right in the middle of these, and there's just some beautiful little wave action as it consolidated all pretty much uh, you know, right around the middle range here. And then, boom, started to lift off of the higher P2. That led us to the highs. Uh, filled back the positive extreme from all the way up here. So 
uh, didn't require even marking because by the time we came back up in this little retrace down here at the end of the day, uh, pretty much filled in all the action of the breakout completely, but that left it uh, completely reset uh, for a new configuration. Uh, we got some positive extremes out of that one. Boo, reset another P2. At the same time, you have the orange dip, and that has led to the most current spikerama. Um, creates a whole new series of levels. It's funny because I've left a lot of these from previous uh, uh, weeks, and you can see how we return to all of them, and they just interestingly correspond to topping levels uh, and also support ranges. Um, they were a little higher than the previous ones, which is why this was so soft going in. But right here, stayed right along the mid-tone of it, and then uh, once it deviated past, it came back below it. Um, and then fit right in between, and then now we're broken out and we're all the way up at the uh, upper ones. But it's funny because even for as dramatic a move as this is from 2600, this is 150 points, and you're still right at the lows from the previous breakdown. So that just shows you how uh, effective that was from a uh, retrace standpoint. Uh, I know Apple reported it beat its numbers and was soft on its guidance. Um, now we can actually look at the Apple chart. Why the heck not? We have that power. Boom, there it is. And we can see it's been making a consistent little uh, move. This doesn't have the uh, Deocon paint. I don't believe it has the uh, numbers activated. No, but we can do that. You can flip them from zeros to ones. This will show the pivots. And you just push OK, and it will recalibrate itself, and then boom. So this one had a no orange setup right there, uh, but it's right in the middle of uh, what was a buy from uh, ending the day before. So we'll see. It's gotten pretty soft, though, from the peak. You know, This is a beautiful example of making higher highs on much lower shakeout. So clean. DOC spread place right about there. The short snake took place one bar earlier, right about 227. And then nice cascade lower. Love it when it does that. Clean and easy. Haven't really put a Bitcoin in a while so because it just uh, has been um, weak up until now. It broke down. It's traded in consolidation and the other day it started to uh, spike back up, got a little activity. Uh, going in between, but look at how uh, odd the bars are getting now. The liquidity on this has just been uh, sucked dry, which allows for these massive uh, move candles to uh, impact things. But we're not looking at the ranges we used to of four and five hundred points. Uh, now you're talking, you know, a hundred dollars. It's quite a change from the heydays, uh, and that's because of the normalization back into gold and. Uh, oil being that alternative that people flip to for uh, quite a bit. So we've got uh, well, several positive extremes out of this run. Right about here would be the first right around 42 in that. Uh, we are currently in a weak spread right here that came through, but it's just now turning into uh, an actual DOC spread. Uh, you do have a full reset though of um, steel. So just a matter of uh, turn up from there can actually support that right along these lines. Uh, but now that zero is to blow, uh, I mean the red is to blow zero, you got a little bit better probability and there goes the uh, green dot right as we're talking simply because we've dipped right here at the extreme which means you'd have to watch for that steel to cross red and when it does you would expect that uh, uh, the potential speed of this downturn will uh, come to an end and most likely with this one is it faded a little bit, comes back up to the highs during uh, normal market hours, and then uh, the market plays it from there. As always, though, I will keep putting up uh, relevant charts and updating. Let me go ahead and expand this. It looks a little cleaner because sometimes with these higher volatility days, it's a little harder to um, contain the entire chart. Uh, from a 5k standpoint, so there we go, we got nice clean lines from this way. And you can see the um, difference between this orange spike here and the crossover is that you actually have the green 
crossing below red. Red is still rising, which means you're likely to face a little bit more uh, consolidation. Uh, and then once red turns over, you can see that that's led to a bit more of a breakdown. Pretty much started right around that 61 range, so we're down to 54. I mean, it's still significant uh, space for a dip down, so nothing to complain about. As always, though, trade well. Talk to you later.